later, we've got Ian Donald with us in this first part of the show. Um, he's written a book called Underwater Foraging, Free Diving for Food. Uh, we've heard of foraging, but not underwater. Yeah, so um, it's just kind of bringing in uh, the aspect of free diving, which is my main job um, as a free diving instructor here in Cornwall. Um, kind of opening up the gateway, hopefully, to people to uh, explore a little bit more underneath the water and uh, see what they can get for free. So, free diving? Yes. No snorkel, no tanks, nothing. No tanks, just fins, mask, hold your breath, go for it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, how deep can you get, realistically, to have a good look, look around and yeah. then back up? I mean, certainly in Cornwall, most of the interesting stuff's in the top 15, 10 metres of water. So, um, you know, if you go through some... You know, basic training, a couple of days training, most people would be able to get to that depth, feel fairly comfortable at the bottom for a bit and have a look, see the fish, see some seaweeds, crustaceans, you know, all these things that we can have for our dinner table as well, you know, and just have a look around if you don't necessarily want to eat it, of course. The trick, I guess, is holding your breath, so is, that's obviously a big part of your training. Yeah, huge part of the training. Um, just learning to relax, feel comfortable in the water, um, you know, most people feel like they're running out of oxygen when in fact they're just getting a build-up of some other gases, carbon dioxide and things like that, that makes them want to breathe. Um, so, yeah, most people have got a lot more left in the tank than they really realise. What's the trick, then? Um, it really is relaxation. Relaxation, understanding what your body's telling you, um, kind of learning to condition yourself a little bit against some of the more natural sensations you might get. Um but, yeah, we get most people holding their breath for, like, you know, two, three minutes in the first day, um, diving, like I said, to, like, 10, 15 metres, 20 metres, perhaps. What sort of stuff are we talking about that you can see? And obviously fish and things like that. Fish and things like that. Like the same forage and what you're Yeah, I mean, so a lot of this stuff can be done by hand. People think of it, you know, immediately they can think of things like spear fishing and these kind of really, you know, macho stuff like that. But actually all you need is a, a little net bag and you can get um, a huge amount of seaweeds, loads of the seaweeds we have here, lovely clean water, obviously, around Cornwall. Um, you can pick it all up, give it a quick wash under the tap and eat it, dry it, cook it, do whatever you want. Um, variety of crabs and lobsters or obviously things like that, you know, so you can get a, a seriously wide array of food. It's a spectacular world underwater, isn't it? It's, and especially around rocky areas. Yeah, and that's kind of where we focus most of the diving that we'd go. I mean, all of the, the Cornish coastline, lots of little coves, or rocky outcrops, yeah. little caves and things to sort of explore. Um, yeah, and most, you know, if you know what you're looking for, then uh, after an hour or a couple of hours of diving, you'd have more than you could need, really. You know, food wise. So, how, how do people start with something like like free diving? Um, I mean, a lot of people. Uh, I mean, I'd always recommend someone does a course because I mean, there are inherent dangers. Of course, you're underwater, you're out, your natural element. Um, so, we do weekend courses in Newquay. We do longer courses. We do holidays. Um, and of course, you know, with the book, hopefully, I mean. The book is kind of divided into two parts, really. The first 80, 90 pages are purely uh, how to free dive, you know. So if you don't have the time or inclination to come to a course, hopefully there's enough in there to get you going safely. Um, yeah, and there's places all around the world as well. You don't have to, have to come to Cornwall, but, you know, you can go somewhere warmer if you want. <laughs> yeah, that's the only trouble around here. The water can be quite cold. Can't it can. It's getting warmer, thankfully. You know, as the as the months move on. But yeah, we've just gone out of the really chilly period. Can so. you free dive in wetsuits? I suppose you can really, can you? Yeah, wetsuits. Really, it's the only way of doing it. Actually. Oh, is it really? really? I mean, obviously, if it was really lovely and hot, we'd have no wetsuit at all. But um, you can't free dive in a dry suit, unfortunately. That'd be really nice and cosy. But um, yeah, you need a wetsuit. So I mean, the basic kit. You just need a mask, wetsuit, some fins. That's it, you're off. Then you're away. Yeah. Yeah. Is it better to free dive in pairs? Yeah, absolutely. You always should have someone with you. I mean, hopefully you both be trained to some extent anyway, learn the dangers, see what's going on. Um, yeah, you shouldn't have it. I mean, any of this stuff, you're in the water. If something goes wrong and you're on your own, it's not like Flipper's not going to come and help you all of a sudden. You know, you are on your own, you know. So if you've got someone there watching you, making sure you're, you know, doing things safely, you're not stuck under a rock or something. I guess that goes for any diving as well, really. Absolutely, it yeah. It's just, just free diving. Yeah, exactly. You know, scuba diving, you're always diving in buddies and things, and same with free diving, you know. How did you get interested in free diving? Um, 
a combination of things, really. I started scuba diving, you know, sort of uh, 13 years ago or something, added started realising that I was enjoying the snorkelling, the free kind of sensation of it all a little bit more, and it just started to take over, basically. And in fact, very initially, it was a food orientation oh, really? thing. Yeah, I was in the Caribbean and saw these guys diving for crayfish at about 18 metres and thought, yeah, I, I think I want a bit of that as well, you know. So I think for a lot of people, it is, it is sometimes it opens the door to it because, you know, um, free and sustainable food, very importantly, is that sustainability. Um, can be, you know, an inroad to the sport for some people. Obviously, some people get into it for the, the really athletic side and the sport and the competition and stuff, and that's fine, and, you know, we can help people do that as well. But, you know, everyone's got a different reason yeah. to do it. And how are they fishing in the Caribbean? Um, bare hands or the yeah, spears? Or yeah, no, bare hands, just picking them up. I mean, all terrible, te really, looking back at it, the stuff that I was doing back <laughs> then, I'm surprised I'm still here, you know. Um, but it's... Um, yeah, you know, once you've got those basic techniques down, all of these things are totally achievable. It sounds really, you know, scary and extreme, but it really, really isn't. It know? does, it does in a way, because you can, you're saying you can hold your breath for a couple of minutes, two or three minutes, maybe, the normal person. Yeah. So you get, you get two minutes underwater, part of that is going down, part of yeah. that's coming up. Yeah. So you're going to have to come up, take air, and go back down again. Yeah. So it seems a bit of a faff to me. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, um, but if you think, you know, you might spend three hours in the water, you can have the same time on the bottom as a scuba diver would, cumulatively. Um, you know, there's an athletic element to it as well, and you start to learn, you know, very, you know, it's very gentle baby steps the whole time. So, you know, it's like one day you do 10 metres and you feel okay, and the next day you might do a bit longer or you might stay a little bit longer at the bottom. And um, having that freedom without tanks, without all the gear, not lumbering down to the water's edge under, like, you know, 20 kilos of extra weight, yeah. just jumping in the water. And once you've got those techniques down and the, the relaxation element, then, you know, you, you kind of really don't feel like you need to breathe when you're at the bottom. It feels very free and, you know, you're weightless and you're floating and it's silent and you've got no worries about what's happening, you know, in your normal daily life and you can just enjoy the environment yeah, around you. Certainly, yeah. See where, where, where that, that, that's the attraction. What's the world record these days? Can you remember? All, yeah, all sorts of different disciplines. Just with fins, so, you know, Mars Norkel and the fantasy mono fin, like a mermaid tail, uh, you're looking at over 120 metres deep now. Um, and uh, if somebody was just holding their breath on the surface, not moving around, uh, over 12 minutes breath hold. 12? 12 minutes. That's unbelievable. It is unbelievable. I mean, these guys are obviously top athletes, and no one should ever be put off by the idea that, oh, I can never do that or whatever, because it's like... You don't need to You do don't that, need to. Do it's like saying, I'll never run as fast as you, same bolt. Yeah. It's like, fair enough. <laughs> you, know, you can still have fun with it. That's incredible, though. Yeah, I mean, the very deepest anyone's gone successfully is 214 metres, and that's being taken down on a sled and being shot back up to the surface again on that same sled. Um, but, you know, this is, again, it's, it's yeah, the, the don't absolute envelope. Yeah, don't, worry it, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Ten metres, you'll have lots of fun. All right. Uh, OK, so if people want to find out more... Um, yeah, I mean, go to our website, freediveuk.com. Um, the book's on Amazon and in bookshops and dive shops as well. So, you know look through there and plenty of information for people to get their teeth into all right it sounds great you've actually made it sound like something i actually quite fancy having a go at come myself along. but uh, <laughs> good to speak to you thank you for no coming on the show Ian. um that website again by the way is freediveuk.com if you want to find out a little bit more it's uh 10 20 we'll update with the travel situation shortly